Right guys, bit of a serious video this week, so I'm going to start it with a disclaimer. I am not claiming to be a mechanic and everything I've done on this vehicle has been through either advice, reading forums, watching videos or under supervision. So everything I do, take with a pinch of salt, do your own research if you're going to attempt anything like this on your own vehicles. So guys, hello and welcome back to Wilderness Adventures UK. I do apologise right off the bat, not a very wildernessy video this week, but it all comes part of the parcel, unfortunately. Last week I was out camping, as you probably know, because you've seen the video by now, and we had our second breakdown, although this time she did manage to get us back. Now, when I rolled up back to the barn, I parked in the gate that uh, just blocks off the barn area the barn the barn complex if you will and i stopped to get out to open the gate i looked at the front of the vehicle and there was oil pouring off the front of the vehicle as you can probably see the remnants of it down there on the floor so obviously something had gone catastrophically wrong before i went to the woods she did have oil filter and the lift pump replaced as you will have seen in previous video. That was done by a professional mechanic. Um, so when I broke down on the side of the road, obviously my mind went straight to that because it just been repaired. In fact, it wasn't that. And um, yeah, no problem with John's work whatsoever. But he did advise me how to get it going and he did advise me what the consequences were of doing that. So we did it and we got to our destination. We filmed the video and we got home. But when I got back, got back on the Sunday. I started taking it to bits on the Monday. So whilst in the woods, I'd already removed the top intercooler pipe. Crystal clear, no problem, got us to our destination. On the Monday, I came back to the barn and I proceeded to remove the bottom intercooler pipe. And that's when my mind was blown. So the bottom intercooler pipe is this one just here. Ignore this one. This is a, a new part that I'm going to be fitting. That's your top intercooler pipe, goes between the two pipes. That was my bottom intercooler pipe and it has a rubber end on each side. Now, let me just get them for you and show you what, what had happened. So second apology of the video. The lighting isn't great in here, as you know from past, past videos that I've recorded. So I'm not sure how well this is going to pick up. But I will try and describe what's going on in the picture. And um, yeah, if you can increase the contrast on your TV, maybe you'll be able to see it a little bit better. But I'll try my best. But OK, so off your turbo on a 300 TDI, you have a 90 degree pipe, much like this one. So if I show you the inside, it's absolutely still covered in oil. Can you see that? It's just from touching it. And I don't know, again, if the camera is going to pick it up, but the bottom of it is covered in oil because these are the two pipes that were absolutely full. But inside, I'm not sure it's going to pick it up. It has ballooned. It's like somebody's put in a little party balloon and blown it up inside. All the inside is absolutely, it's where the, it, it, well, they call it delaminating. Um, the, the pipe is delaminated. Uh, I'm assuming that's happened over a period of time, uh, probably due to oil in ingress, if anything. And uh, indeed, the one that goes, this is the, that, that's the turbo end, that pipe I just showed you. And this one is the intercooler end. And hopefully you can see it just here starting to delaminate on the intercooler end. But again, just from two seconds of touching it. So now I'm going to have to go and find a cloth and wipe my hands off before I touch my camera. So with the pipes having deteriorated so bad, it made me think there was something further wrong. So I started taking stuff to bits. So your air filter on a 300 TDI runs to this black tube here, which goes on to the back of your turbo just here. So I pulled this off, which was a nightmare because that pipe butts up against the bulkhead. So you can't move it that way to get it off which is the way it needs to go. So it was an absolute nightmare, but we managed to get it off. Put my fingers in the turbo and that's when this happened. Now I'll take you over to the back of the cruiser, which is where the rest of the bits are. So guys, this is the turbo off a 300 TDI. I have taken it with the complete manifold. I do know these bull horns, they call them, do remove, but trying to get them off, absolutely nightmare in a barn when you haven't got access to a vice and other tools. 
But this is the important bit here, the turbo. See if I can do this one handed and show you in here. Can you see that in there? Yep. That is your, your impeller or, or fins or, or, or but God knows what they bloody call it. Again, I'm not a specialist, so I don't know exactly what the name is. But that is min meant to spin freely on bearings. And it has come off in such a way that it's got wed absolutely wedged in there. Uh, damaged it horrendously. So we've taken the whole thing off and we've ordered the whole thing again. Now, when I was speaking to several people, they were saying it should come off the manifold. But on a 300 TDI, you can see the wastegate is part of the actual manifold. Let's see if I can position this so you can see it. So just here it is part of the manifold, so you can't actually remove it. Although I could have removed this split fit pin and taken it off and sent that bit off, means the, uh, the, the wastegate would not be getting serviced, because I'd still have this bit. So I've taken the whole thing off, and what I've had to do is I've had to buy... Let's get you back to me, to my face. So, as I was saying, I've had to buy the full unit. So I've bought new bull horns, new manifolds, new turbo, everything reconditioned. Not bloody cheap. Uh, as well as that, I'm going to be replacing the, the intercooler pipes, obviously, because the bottom ones were damaged. Top one, not so bad, but bottom one, absolutely ghost. And also, I came to flush out the intercooler because there was loads of oil in the intercooler where it sucked it in through the bottom pipe. And uh, as I was flushing it out, I was advised to flush it out with diesel a couple of times and then anything else to, to, to take out the residue diesel. When I filled it up, this is your intercooler, again on a 300 TDI. When I filled it up, it was in such a manner, over a bucket, poured diesel in there and it came straight out the front end. So, the intercooler is compromised as well. Now the question is, what caused the turbo to go? Now it could have been a lot of things. It could have been leaking for a while, which caused that pipe to suck in, which obviously stopped the turbo from breathing and caused it to fail. It could be that it's not been breathing well for a while because there's a hole in the intercooler. Could be that it's just an old unit and the bearings have, have, have got tired and let go. It could be that I took off the top intercooler pipe and ran it home 70 miles with no top intercooler pipe. Not giving it the, the restriction in air that it needs to cause the vacuum. Obviously, you've taken a top bit off the vacuum, it's not going to breathe as it should. So it could be various things, it could be various things, but it's happened now and uh, all that matters is we get it back up and running. But I'll lift up the bonnet and show you under there what's gone off. Right, I'll film this bit from behind the camera. So this beam here just goes along and holds in your radiator and where your intercooler should be. But obviously intercooler's over there on the floor. This is where your inlet and your turbo belong. Turbo right over there in the corner. And that's where that pipe butts up against that firewall just there or bulkhead. Now I will say before the comments start, all the feed and return pipes for the turbo are being replaced as are all the gaskets as is the intercooler and all the piping so the whole turbo system is getting replaced on this car now as i mentioned before all this has been very very daunting coming from the perspective of a guy who knows his way around an engine bay but is working on his own car without any supervision but i have been going back and forth to john's to my friend matt as well as various forums and youtube um, I wish I hadn't, if I'm being completely honest, because it, it's put even that more doubt in my head that I could do it. But it's all in bits now, and usually the rule of thumb is with me, if I can take it to bits, I can usually put it back together. All the bolts and all, all the fittings are on the wall behind you. My pipes are all cleaned, hosed out, so there's no oil in them. New intercooler, so I don't have to worry about oil there. There's only one more bit I need to do, and that's the bit that runs to the actuator to tell it when to boost. Can't remember what it's called, but it goes on top of your, your fuel pump, your injection pump rather. So I need to open that up. It's a Allen key bolt, just looking at it here, and just make sure that that tube that runs from the actuator to that hasn't filled it full of oil. So I need to clean that out dead quick. I'm gonna be doing that just off camera in a minute. 
but I just thought I'd bring you all up to speed and keep you in the loop on this video, which is why you're not going to see me out for the next couple of weeks and there's not going to be no outdoor videos because I can't get there unless I go in the cruiser and then it's just going to be a, a, a rambling hiking video because <clears throat> that's not set up as a camper. Plus, my weekends are going to be taken up with this. Uh, I came down on Friday, started stripping it, came down yesterday, cleaned everything off. Uh, Friday as well, I took the turbo and I s seek some professional advice for people who rebuild turbos and it wasn't much more to buy a whole new manifold and everything than it was to get that one repaired, which is why I've gone down that route. Uh, didn't want to attempt to fit a cartridge myself because I don't know what damage has been done by that impeller propeller thing coming off so that might have scored the inside and then when I fit the new one it might not it might not seat properly and I have the same problem again so I'd rather buy one that's been refurbished checked double checked and I'd rather fit that so that that's been my whole trail of thought it's cost a little bit more doing it this way but I have got that peace of mind that once I replace it all it's done it I've replaced the full braking system I replaced the full turbo system it's had a few other bits and stuff so so when we go for our trip in October um, I know that that's not going to be an issue. But yeah, onwards and upwards. I'm going to take this off, check this, clean it out all off camera. And I'm going to sign off for today. Very short, just me jabbering to the camera video. I do apologise, nothing exciting going on. But uh, yeah, if you've got any comments, if this has happened to you, if you've got any advice, uh, please do feel free to chirp up and tell me to look out for stuff. I mean, various friends have so far and they're all things that I am going to be doing like oil change another oil change just in case some bits have been pulled into the oil uh, filter change I'm going to cut open the filter and check make sure there's no damage being done to the engine obviously because um, it did get very low on oil didn't run out no engine lights came on and it didn't overheat so I'm, I'm very sure that the engine is fine it's just a turbo that's absolutely buggered so uh, yeah I will uh, love yous and leave yous. I'm going to crack on and do this really quick off camera and then I'm going to get home and get cleaned up because I'm already dirty from touching all them parts. So uh, yeah, you all look after yourselves. Take care. Wish me luck on this. And hopefully next time you see it, it'll be all up and running and it'll be better than it was yesterday. All right, folks. See you all very soon.